Hello, everybody. Sorry, it's early, so this is going to be a pretty technical talk. Uh, the, my, the name of my talk is Arrested Development, and I'm Mitch Davenport. I'm a network engineer who specializes in wireless networking and API integrations. In this presentation, I'm going to walk you through the process of using APIs in Python to automate tasks. My goal is to give you a framework to build your own integrations and automations, even if you've never used an API or written a single line of code. Can I get a show of hands? How many people here have used APIs to automate something? Okay, that's a lot. I'm willing to bet in the next five years that that number will significantly increase. APIs and programmability are the future of networking. In this conference, I've heard a lot of people talking about how they want to use APIs, but they don't know where to start. Hopefully this presentation will give you a starting point. Uh, here are the steps I use to take an idea of an integration into a fully automated process. So in this example, I will show you how to access a Cisco CMX API, get a wireless device location, and plot that on a map. The first step is to define your requirements. Ask yourself, what process are you trying to automate? In this case, we want to automate getting a client's location and placing that on an image of the building's floor. Next, you'll find the API reference guide. Use that guide to, sorry. Use that guide to determine the types of resources that are available to you. Once you've found the resources, you use Postman to test the resources out to find the actual capabilities or caveats with those APIs. And then once you've identified the resources you need, you will create the pseudocode. And your goal of writing pseudocode is to describe the set of steps and variables you will need to accomplish your goal. It lays out a framework for how you will structure your code in whatever language you decide to program it in. In this case, we'll convert the pseudocode to Python. And on the right is a highly scientific chart showing that you don't really need a lot of programming knowledge to do most of the steps necessary to automate with an API. So we've already defined our requirements. So the next step is finding the API reference guide. You can usually find a product's reference guide by Googling product name REST API or product named API reference. In this case, the guide is located on our CMX server, the location below. If you don't know what Cisco CMX is, it's an application that gives you the wireless location of your clients. Uh, reading through the reference guide, we find three specific APIs we will need to plot our user on the map. They are get client history by MAC address, get floor information, and get floor image. So now that we've identified what APIs we will use, we need to test them out. Postman is a free application that you can use to easily test API resources. To test our CMX APIs, you first enter the resource URL, choose the correct resource type, and craft the headers needed for the request. In this case, the headers you need will be the API username and password to access your CMX. So now we will test our first resource. On the right, you will see a screenshot from Postman. And on the top is a picture of the API we are using from the reference guide. The blue arrow shows where the request, we, where in the request we put the MAC address of the client. And this API takes in the MAC address and returns the client's XY coordinates and feet, as well as the campus building and floor it's on. The red arrows show the location of the information we need in the response JSON body. It point, the arrows point to the variables we've created to store those values. We'll need some of these for the next API call. So now that we know what campus building and floor this device is, we feed that into a second API resource to get more information on the floor itself. We need the floor's dimension in both feet as well as pixels. We will later use this to calculate a scale factor indicating how many pixels are in a given foot. And the third API we need provides us with an image file of the floor. It takes in a campus building and floor and gives us back a copy of the floor image. Now that we've tested our resources and found the variables we need, we will write the pseudocode to automate the process. 
Essentially, you're defining a list of steps and variables you need to accomplish your goal. Using the variables in red, we will now define the process needed to draw the location on the map. First, we will use the APIs to populate the variables on the right by calling them in the correct order and passing them the input they need. Then, we will need to determine a scale factor, which is the relation of image X and Y coordinates and pixels to the known image X and Y in feet. To do this, take the map's width and pixels and divide by the map's width and feet. We will now use a scale factor to find the user's X and Y coordinates and pixels. And we need to take our map image file variable, load it into memory so we can manipulate it. Then we will draw a circle centered on our calculated user X and Y pixels, choose the radius of the circle as well as its color. The final step is saving that image file from memory onto disk with the specified file name. So writing the pseudocode is the easy part. Now you need to translate that into Python. And if you're new to programming, Python's a great first language to learn. Uh, when programming, you'll want to find out what modules already exist to help you complete your task. You can install these in Python by running pip install module name. And then for REST API calls, we'll use the module called requests. Requests handles the background work of setting up an HTTP transaction and returning you a response in JSON. And for the image drawing and manipulation, we use Pillow. And Pillow will help us draw the circle and resize the resulting image. So after converting pseudocode to Python, this is a snippet of the finished script. You can see each function takes in input variables we defined in our pseudocode. The functions, starting with call, use the request module to make REST API calls. It then returns the variables we need. The draw client location on image function takes in our user's location in feet, uses the scale factor to convert feet to pixels, and then uses pillow to draw a circle at the user's location on top of the map image. The function named main will always be executed first in a Python script, and it defines the order in which individual functions are called. In the function main, we call three functions that use the API to populate the variables we need, and then we send those variables to the function that draws the circle on the map. And at the end of the presentation, I have a link to the full source code. So you can try it out yourself. So now that I've shown you how to draw the client location on the map, I would challenge you to take that script and extend its functionality to help yourself learn. Uh, most of the automation and scripting I've just learned through trial and error. And these are just some ideas of features you could add to the base script. And in this presentation, I've shown you one API and one possible task you can do with it, but there are many more APIs and endless possibilities of what you can do with them. Here are just a few that I came up with. You could create a Jabber bot that sends you an IM when a controller goes down. You could build a tool for your help desk to locate laptops and wireless devices. You can create the mythical single pane of glass that pulls in data from multiple vendor systems and displays them on a single web page. And you can also create your own REST APIs. One example of this is creating an API that is simply a URL users go to and allows them to reset PoE on a port. In the background, you have a script that SSHs to the network device and removes and re-adds the PoE commands. And here's the links, which you can see later. And that is it. Thank you.